Welcome everybody to this lecture where I would like to talk about the Milgram Roberts banking crisis model. In this model, moral hazard will play a role. And let's start with the assumptions of this model. There is a bank, which is the agent, and the bank collects deposits from various depositors. The depositors are the principals. The bank will invest the deposits as well as own equity in one project. The bank can choose between a secure and insecure investment alternative and there is a conflict of interest in the basic scenario. The depositors, like the principals, they have preferences in favor of the secure alternative, while the bank, the agent, has preferences for the insecure alternative. Then, this conflict of interest might result in moral hazard. Like before the contract between the bank and the depositor is signed, the bank assures to invest in the secure alternative. So the bank promises and advertises that the bank is a secure bank and that they only invest in secure investment alternatives. After the bank has collected the liquidity, the bank will depart from its promise and the bank will invest in the insecure investment alternative. The problem is, in case that the depositors can anticipate the behavior of the bank, a banking market will not materialize. Let's have a look at the characteristics of the different securities, like the secure alternative. In order to invest into the secure alternative, the bank needs an investment of 100. This stems from depositors. The depositors, they are giving 96 units and equity, these are four units. So the investment capital is 100 euro. When, we, when the bank opts for the secure alternative with a probability of 50%, the project will up in the high state of nature and the reflux is 115. With the probability of 50%, the project ends up in the low state of nature and the reflux is 105. So the expected gross value of this secure investment alternative is equal to 110. This investment is labeled as secure because the realized gross values are always larger, larger than the invested capital in all states of nature. So also when the um, project ends up in the low state of nature, the bank is able to pay back the capital from the depositors. The reflux from the project is split up in the following way. In a first stop, the funds are used to back the claims of the depositors. Uh, they should receive back their initial investment of 96 as well as interest payments of 4. In a second step, the bank receives the residual. So in case that we are in the low stage of nature, the reflux is 105. This is split up in the following way. The depositors, they will get back their 96 and the four units of interest. So they will receive 100 and the remaining part like five euros end up in the pockets of the bank. When the um, project ends up in this high state of nature, the reflux is 115, 100 goes to the depositors and 15 to the banks. So the expected gross value is 110 for the overall project. It's 100 for the depositors and 10 for the bank. The expected net value is equal to 4 for the depositors because they invested 96 euros. They will get back 100 euros, so the expected net value is 100 minus 96, it's equal to 4. The expected net value for the bank is equal to 6, 
they invested four units of um, equity and um, they will receive an expected gross value of 10. So 10 minus the equity is equal to 6 with respect to the expected net value. So also here it becomes clear that there is no risk for the depositors. They always will receive their initial investment as well as the interest irrespectively of the state of nature. So a very secure alternative. Let's have a look at the insecure alternative. The bank also invests 100 into this uh, project like 96 euros stem from the depositors and 4 euros stems from the equity of the bank. With a probability of 50%, the project ends up in the high state of nature and ends up at the value of 130. And with a probability of 50%, uh, the project ends up in the low stage of nature and will receive a reflux of 60. The expected gross value uh, is the average of uh, these two states of nature. It is equal to 95. So this investment alternative is labeled as insecure because when the low stage of nature materializes, uh, the depositors are not able to get back their initial investment. Therefore, there is some risk that the depositors will lose money. How is the reflux split up in the insecure investment alternative? In case that the project ends up in the low stage of nature, uh, 60 units will go to the depositors and nothing to the bank. In the high stage of nature, it's a case that the reflux is 130, 100 goes to the depositors and the remaining part, like 30, to the bank. The expected gross value for the depositors is equal to 80. Uh, the expected gross value for the bank is equal to 15. And the expected net value is negative for the depositors because they invested 96 and the expected gross value is 80, so 80 minus the initial investment of 96, the expected net value is minus 16. The expected net value for the bank is equal to 15 minus the equity of 4, it is equal to 11. Uh, the bank, of course, has an incentive to opt for the insecure alternative because the expected net value of the insecure alternative is equal to 11 and the expected net value of the secure alternative is only equal to 6. The depositors have an incentive that the banks should opt for the secure alternative because the expected net value of the secure alternative is equal to 4 and this is larger than the negative 16, the expected net value of the insecure alternative. So here it is clear that there is a conflict of interest between the agent, the bank, and the principals, like the depositors. The big question is, will a banking market emerge in case that the depositors have no possibility to monitor the investment behavior of the bank and the depositors are able to anticipate the behavior of the bank? Let's uh, model it as a kind of uh, decision tree. In a first step, the depositors, they have to decide whether they give deposits to the banks or whether they do not deposit money with a bank. In a second step, the banks, they have to opt whether they invest the liquidity in the secure alternative or the insecure alternative. You can see here the payoffs in the different parts of the decision tree. Uh, the black um, numbers, they represent the expected payoff for the depositors and the red numbers, they represent the expected net value for the bank. Let's solve this decision tree by using the method of backward induction. 
In the first step, it is the case that we have to find out how the banks will react in case that the depositors deposited money with the banks. So the banks, they have to compare like the 6 and the 11. The 11 is larger than the 6, so we can cross out that the banks will opt for the secure alternative in case that the depositors deposited money with the banking sector. Now we have to find out whether the depositors will deposit money with a bank or will not deposit money with a bank. In case that the depositors do not deposit money with a bank, nobody loses, nobody wins, it's zero zero. So the depositors, they are interested in their own expected payoff. It's zero here and it's a minus 16 in case that they deposit with a bank and the banks opt for the insecure alternative. Since the depositors do not want to lose money, we can cross out this alternative here. And the solution of this game is that um, the depositors will not deposit money with the banks so the depositors they can anticipate the behavior of the banks that they will opt for the insecure alternative and therefore they will not give liquidity to the banking sector no banking market materializes so we have talked about the first part of uh, this milgram roberts model we were looking at the scenario where there is no possibility to monitor so the depositors are not able to check whether the banks uh, invested in the secure or insecure alternative since the depositors are able to anticipate the behavior of the banking sector. They will not give money to the bank and therefore a banking market does not materialize. Let's check what happens in the second scenario where informed depositors can monitor the commercial banking sector. We assume that the group of depositors consists out of informed and uninformed depositors. Informed depositors, they can observe and evaluate the investment behavior of the bank. They know the risk level of the chosen alternative. Informed depositors have, due to the sequential move out rule, like first come, first serve, an incentive to pull out their deposits as soon as possible. Informed depositors will not burden any cost. Maybe it is a case that the uninformed depositors, which have a backward position in the queue in front of the bank, that they will lose some money. But let's check this. Non-informed depositors may be able to observe the behavior of the informed agents. They may be able to infer from the action of the uninformed depositors the private information and will also line up in front of the bank. What does that mean? It implies that in case that some people line up in front of the bank prematurely, an uninformed agent, which is not able to read a bank balance sheet, gets a signal from the people who are, which are queuing up in front of the bank that uh, the bank has invested in the insecure alternative and then also an uninformed agent which is not able to read a bank balance sheet is able to um, read this kind of information via the behavior of the informed agents because the informed agents line up also the uninformed agents agents will line up however like the uninformed agents have a rewarded position within the queue and if a banking market emerges it will be the case that the bank will lose its equity completely Let's once more create a decision tree with the possibility to monitor. When the depositors give money to the bank, then the bank has to opt for the secure or insecure alternative. In case that the depositors do not deposit with the banking sector, the payoff is once more zero and zero. When the depositors deposit money with a bank and the bank opts for the secure alternative, 
we are once more in the scenario where the reflux is expected to be 4 for the depositors and 6 for the bank. When the um, depositors invest in the banking sector and the bank opts for the insecure alternative, then the payoff is a negative 4 for the bank and the payoff for the depositors is either 0 or negative. Why is that? It's either 0 or negative because of the fact that the informed agents, they will have a good position in the queue in front of the bank and their reflux will be equal to zero. They don't lose, they don't gain, but some uninformed agents, they might lose some money. So uh, X might be negative for the uninformed agents. However, when this bank run occurs, the bank will be bankrupt and the bank will lose its equity completely, which is a payoff of minus four. Now let's check how the bank behaves. The bank has to compare the six and the minus four. And now it is a case that the bank will opt for the secure alternative and will not invest in the insecure alternative. The informed agents, they are disciplining the bank to stick to its promise because else the bank will lose its equity completely. It's so clear that the informed depositors will cause a bank run in case that the bank does not stick to the pr promise. Now it is a case that the depositors have to think about whether they give liquidity to the banking sector, yes or no. The depositors have to compare the zero and the four. The four is larger, so we can rule out the uh, possibility that no banking market occurs. The solution is that a banking market occurs. The depositors are depositing money with the banking sector. The banking sector are opting for the secure um, investment alternative and the depositors are cro cross-checking and the depositors are reading the bank balance sheet and they are controlling whether the bank indeed sticks stick to its promise and invest in the secure alternative. So here in the second uh, scenario, it is the case that the risk that the informed depositors trigger a bank run disciplines the bank. The bank will opt for the secure investment alternative and a banking market emerges. This is the main insight of the second part of chapter three, that a banking market emerges and the informed depositors are disciplining the commercial banking sector. Let's check what happens if the government thinks that it's a good idea to introduce a deposit insurance in the form of a lender of the last resort. So um, let's check what's ha what happens if uh, the commercial banking sector invests in the insecure alternative, but we have a deposit insurance in place. In case that we end up in the low stage of nature, the reflux is 60, but the insurance guarantees that the depositors will receive 100 euros. So the depositors, they have a reflux of a negative 40 in this stage of nature, so that the insurance company or the lender of the last resorts is bailing out like the depositors. In a high stage of nature, this is not necessary because the reflux is large enough to pay the 100 to the depositors and there is even a profit of 30 for the banks. The expected gross value is 100 for the depositors, 15 for the bank, and it's um, a minus 20 for the insurance company. The expected net value is four, like the interest payment for the depositors, it's equal to 11 for the banks because of the fact that 
Uh, the expected gross value is 15, the equity is 4. So when we subtract 15 minus the equity, expected net value is equal to 11. The expected net value is negative for the insurance company, for the land of the last resort. And hence, it's also the case that the sum of um, the insecure alternative is negative when you sum up the different components. So the insecure alternative is definitely not a good choice for the society. The bank has an incentive to opt for the insecure alternative because the expected net value of the insecure alternative is 11 and it's larger than 6, like the expected net value of the secure alternatives. And the depositors, they are indifferent between secure and insecure alternative because of the fact that when the uh, banks opt for the secure alternative, the expected net value is equal to 4. And when the banking sector opt for the insecure al alternative, but there is an insurance in place, the four units' interests are always guaranteed, and hence it is the case that the depositors are indifferent between the secure and insecure alternative. Furthermore, it also becomes clear that there is no incentive anymore for the depositors to monitor the investment behavior of the commercial banking sector. So the depositors have no incentive to monitor. The depositors, they have no incentives to spend a lot of time in reading bank balance sheets in order to find out whether the banks opt in the best interest and invest in the secure alternative or whether moral hazard occurred and they, the banks departed from their promise. There is no incentive anymore that informed depositors like the clever guys do their jobs because of the fact that in case that the commercial banking sector does not stick to its promise, it will be the case that the insurance company, the lender of the last resort, will step in. There is no risk for the bank that informed agents will cause a bank run. The risk of moral hazard increases. The bank once more assures a secure investment, but opts in the end for the risky investment after the contracts are signed. The profit of the risky investment stay with the bank, but the losses of the risky investment are a burden for the insurance institution like the government or the whole society. The allocation of capital is inefficient because the sum of all net values is negative in the insecure investment alternative. So the policy implications are very important. In case that a deposit insurance is introduced by a government, the government also needs to introduce a second institution. The second institution is a supervisory institution which is needed in order to supervise the commercial banking sector. The deposit insurance is introduced but we also need a second institution because now the informed depositors, like the clever households, they have no incentive anymore to read a bank balance sheet. And if nobody reads a bank balance sheet, then the banks will opt for the insecure investment alternative, which is negative for the society. So it's very important that when the lender of the last resort is introduced, we also need a banking supervision. And this is very interesting in so far as in the Euro area or the EU, it was for a very long time not clear whether the ECB, the European Central Bank, will have this lender of the last resort function. At some point in time, it became clear that the ECB will also take over the role as a lender of the last resort. And it's exactly in this 
point in time when it became clear that the ECB will take over this kind of role in the crisis of 2008-2009 uh, and subsequently, then it was also the case that the ECB took over the role as the banking supervision in the EU. So let's sum up. Um, is it a good idea to have a lender of the last resort function in place? In the diamond dip big world, we would say yes, a lender of the last resort function is very important. It is so important because a lender of the last resort function is able to stabilize the expectations of the private households. In case that there is a lender of the last resort in place, type 2 households, they can wait. Type 2 households know that their investment is secured and type 2 households will not line up prematurely in period 1 so that the banks are not forced to terminate long-term projects prematurely. In the diamond dipping model, the introduction of the lender of the last resort is very important and is also justified. This is completely different in the Milgram Roberts world. In their model, it is a case that the introduction of the lender of the last resort will do some harm to the society in case that the lender is of the last resort is introduced in isolation. The pure introduction of only a lender of the last resort will distort the monitoring activities of the clever guys like of this informed depositors. In case that the government opts to introduce a lender of the last resort, it is also important to introduce um, a banking supervision because then the banking supervision will take over the role of the informed agents. This is the end of this lecture. Have a nice day. Bye bye.